it's time for Reflections with Pastor Drayton. Hi and welcome once again. This is Reflections, a 15-minute broadcast that's designed to bless you, inspire you, and encourage you to live for the Lord Jesus Christ if you are not so doing. But either way, this message is in designed to be a blessing to you. And I hope that you will just spend the next 15 minutes with me and hear what I want to share with you, teach you from the Word of God today. Well, the last couple of weeks I've been sharing some very interesting, I thought they were interesting messages, interesting devotionals, and I want to continue on from there, but show you another side today. Uh, I shared from Acts chapter 16, verses 6 through 10, I think it was, uh, but I'm just going to go to verse 8 today, and uh, with the same text, same text, but Acts 16, verse 6 through 8. And it reads, Next Paul and Silas traveled through the area of Phrygia and Galatia because the Holy Spirit had prevented them from preaching the word in the province of Asia at that time. That's how the New Living Translation puts it. Then coming to the borders of Mycenae, they headed north for the province of Bithynia. But again, the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go there. So instead, they went on through Mycenae to the seaport of Troas. That's all I need to read for this occasion. Now, I've been sharing with you, both in the online church with Pastor D, as well as on Reflections, about the importance, according to the Word, according to Scripture, of walking in the Spirit, being led by the Spirit, and living in the Spirit. And those references are found in Romans 8, 14, and Galatians 5, 23. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And Galatians 5.23, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So I, I am very, very firmly set on the belief that as we draw cl closer to the end, and with all the deception that is all around us in the world today, that the child of God needs to be led by the Holy Spirit. We need to walk by the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. And we also need to live in the Holy Spirit. Our whole life should be kind of saturated in the presence of God as we seek to do God's will and God's bidding. So I believe very, very uh, strongly that we have come into a time where there is a lot of emphasis on the spiritual and on the supernatural. And that is good and bad, all right, or from the good side and from the bad side. And we as Christians who are people who walk in the light, we are on the good side. And so I believe very firmly that our lives should be uh, representing that light and walking in the Holy Spirit. But there is another side, and that's what I want to talk about today. It is the practical side. And I, I believe that the more spiritual you are, the more practical you should be. That's, that's a discussion for another time, even though I've mentioned that before. And I'm sharing with you today, not for balance, not for balance, but for the sake of inclusion. Um, as I said, I believe if there's going to be a bias, if there is a bias, it should be a bias to being led by the Holy Spirit. I just think it's become more and more important. All right, It, it could very well be balanced, but... I just want to, to, to tell you that for me, it doesn't get more important than hearing and listening to what God is saying. All right. So I, I find that too many Christians have inadvertently become paralyzed, uh, ineffective, maybe even useless, because they, they've got on to a, a, a super spiritual kick where they, they can't do anything or they feel they can't do anything or they shouldn't do anything unless God tells them. Now, God will tell us. God will definitely tell us when he needs us to do something. But as I said, we're going to look at the other side of that um, for a few moments today. Okay. God has told us many, many things to do in his word which he will not speak to us otherwise about. What, what do I mean by that? Well, if God has told us to do something in his word, then he doesn't necessarily need to come and tell us to do it by his Holy Spirit. If it's written there, it's there. 
if you if you have a, a child and you write a list you're you're heading out or whatever going out to town uh, and you write a list that said i want you to do these three things uh while i'm gone then there's no need when you're out to call your child to tell your child oh i want you to do these three. it doesn't make any sense you've written a list you've given the child the child can read the child can understand then there is just this matter of walking out or being obedient to what you have left in your list so when we look at god and we look at our relationship with god i i like to well i like to 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 emphasize the practical side um because that's where the rubber meets the road that has to do with day-to-day living and, and I, it's so important but the other side is so important as well so i'm a little bit of a, a straight but i feel i need to give you this side today so apart from what god has commanded and expects in and from his word there's a whole element of his nature within us and his gifts or his calling. There you go. How about compassion? One of the attributes of God that, that as Christians, having his Holy Spirit living inside of us, we automatically become compassionate beings. How about giving? Uh, I'll come to a specific scripture on that in just a moment, but giving is a part of our nature as children of God. How about care? caring for the elderly, caring for those who are less fortunate than ourselves, caring for those who may have had an accident or calamity. That is that is a part of who we are and is a part of what we do. Uh, how about helps? There's actually a gift of the Holy Spirit called helps. Now, if God has given you the gift of helps, why does he need to come and tell you to help? He doesn't because it is if I may put it this way, second nature for us. So we have to consider this fact that God has given to us gifts, abilities, talents, um, compassion, attributes, qualities, characteristics, which will produce action, which will produce works that he doesn't need to tell us to do. We don't have to be led by the Spirit. That's what I'm trying to say. To do these things because they proceed naturally out of our beings. So by virtue of being a Christian, by virtue of being a child of God, we either do automatically certain things or because that is what Christians do. I I said a prayer this morning um, for uh, Mr. Putin or Putin, depending on where, where you live, and at the end of my prayer, I prayed for his salvation. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't pray for his salvation because I felt it would be good for him to be saved. I prayed for his salvation because it was the right thing to do. Uh, As children of God, we should be praying for people like him that he will come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. But the human side of me, that's, that's certainly not what... I want to pray for him at all. Uh, so there's just a little example to say, you know, there are things that we do simply because they're right, simply because God has put them in his word, uh, and he doesn't have to lead us by his Holy Spirit to do those things. James 2, this is the verse I was mentioning earlier, verses, verse 15 through 17, New Living Translation say, Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing. You know where I'm going with this already. And you say, goodbye and have a good day. Stay warm and eat well. Well, that is, that is extremely unchristian. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? According to the scripture. Verse 17 says, so you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It is dead and useless. So, as Christians, you see somebody in need, um, you have to allow that 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 uh, spirit within us not to be led by the Holy Spirit, but simply to do what the Spirit would have done in that case. All right? 
You see somebody in need, you bless them. If you can, if you're in a position, you help them. Now, let me, let me in this case, bring balance. Now, I, I have been through certain experiences with beggars, people who come to you on the street and beg you for money, um, which, which I'm not going to right now. But th these experiences have led me to a default to say no. You come and ask me for money, the answer is no. Do not come and ask me for money. Do not come and beg me for money. However, when someone comes and asks me for money, I try to listen for the voice of God or the prompting of God to say, yes, your default is no, but I want you to give this one some money. You see where I'm coming from? The, the, the Holy Spirit then will lead you in that situation to bless the individual or if your default is otherwise, not to bless the individual. So you see somebody in need, you help them, you do something for them. Matthew 5, 14 to 16 says, you are the light of the world. That is who we are as Christians, as a church. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. There is nothing in those verses that indicates this is to be led by the Holy Spirit. If you are a child of God, you are light. If you're in this world, you are light of the world. That is who we are. And we are to let our light shine. We are not supposed to hide our light, but let our light shine. We, we do stuff. We do good things. We do good unto all men, unto all people, especially those of a household of faith. You don't have to be led by God to do that. God has already, well, I, let me say, commanded us. But whether he's commanded us or not, it is a part of our nature. As I mentioned on Sunday when I was preaching, uh, I grew up in a home where both my mother and father were comic, so I tend to have a very comical side about me. But that is my nature. So I can't help but be funny sometimes. Okay, sometimes it doesn't work. I can't help but be funny. We can't help but be good people. We can't help but let our light shine. We can't help but do good for people who are in need and, and help where, where we can. And and sometimes even, even bringing a little balance in this one, Sometimes God will lead us by His Spirit to give sacrificially. You see where I'm coming from? So, so you, you have to, yes, we have to do what the Word of God says, but we also have to listen for what the Spirit of God is saying or may want to say in any given situation. Let me get, get a few more minutes. Let me share this with you. Uh, Romans 12, 19 and 20. This is a little different now. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, get this, if thine enemy is hungry, feed him. See, what this is now is a principle. Okay? If your enemy is hungry, it's not a command necessarily, but it's a principle that God has shared where we deal with those who are not so nice to us. So if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him drink. For in so doing, you shall heap coals of fire on his head. So the principle is there. The truth is there. The reality is there. The commands are there. The, the nature of God inside of us is there. All these things are there that will allow us to do and to be as God's people without being led by the Spirit. Now, don't forget, I am not speaking against it. I am 100% for that. But what I'm bringing is, do not go to the extreme where you cannot do anything unless you're led by the Spirit, because there's so many things that we are given and deposited in our nature that we can and should do and are expected to do, nothing to do with the leading or the involvement of God's Holy Spirit. But what I'm saying to you is that while you are doing it, listen for the voice of God, where God may want to specifically lead you. And we go right back to our text that I read, Acts 16, where the, uh, Paul and Silas were heading into, where I have it written down here, they were heading into uh, uh, the province of Asia, 
and they were also heading into Bithynia. That's where they were going because they understood that they were to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. And that's what they were doing. So they weren't, they weren't being led by the Holy Spirit. They were simply doing what they were supposed to do. But while they were doing that, the Holy Spirit intervened and said, don't go to the province of Asia at this time. And also, don't go to Bithynia. And the reason that the Holy Spirit intervened and said to them, don't do this or do that, was because God wanted now to lead them to Macedonia. And if you read on, I, I tell, talked about this a couple of days ago. If you want to re read on, you will see then that that very night, after the Holy Spirit stopped them from going into Bithynia, that night Paul had a vision and God was calling him over to Macedonia. And so, so again, just let me reemphasize as I close this broadcast that I want you to understand that God has given to us his word, he's given to us his nature, he's given to us principles in his word that we are to follow that will give us an agenda for action, for doing, and even for being as children of God. But in all this, don't, don't leave it out, don't exclude it to wait on the Holy Spirit to speak to you. But at the same time, in your moving, just like Paul and Silas, moving to do the will of God as it is in the Word of God, listen for the Holy Spirit's leading. Listen for what God may say to you specifically. No, don't go there. Don't speak to that one. Don't give this one. Don't give that one. This is what I want you to do. So, as I've said many times before, not on this broadcast, but I've said many times before, guidance comes through motion. Don't sit and wait. As a matter of fact, this is called no need to wait. Don't sit and wait. Do all that is in the Word of God to do, and as you're doing it, listen to be led by the Holy Spirit where there is something specific God would have you to do. That's my teaching for today and reflections. I'll see you next week Wednesday. God bless you. Have a great day.